Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics with a little bit different of a video for you today. I want to show you the first comic books I've ever bought on Whatnot. I know a lot of people use Whatnot to buy comic books, but I'm not one of them. I've been a long time lurker, but I've never actually bought anything. For those of you that don't know what Whatnot is, it is an online live auction site that's great not only for buying comic books, but all sorts of collectibles. Uh, sort of the new way to buy comics in the last couple of years. And yeah, you can get some pretty great deals so I actually bought my first comic books on Whatnot. I think they're pretty cool and I got them for a great price. But these comics in and of themselves weren't interesting enough to make a video all on its own. Well, that's okay because as fate would have it, I got another book on Whatnot, but I didn't buy it on Whatnot. I saw it on Whatnot, drove to the place that was having the sale and took the book. I kind of just stole it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to explain that. Don't worry, it's not as nefarious as it sounds, but definitely an interesting story. But before I show you the comic books I got and whatnot, guys, I actually have a couple of boxes I just got in. I thought I would open right here uh, in front of all of you. One of them was actually a gift from a viewer, and the other one uh, was a comic book I bought from one of my friends. Before I show you what they are, you guys know the drill. If you like this sort of stuff and you wanna support the channel, head on down, like, comment, and subscribe, and you can follow me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. Speaking of Instagram, uh, that's how I ended up with this box right here. Uh, so people contact me on Instagram all the time just to say hi, talk about some comic books they just got, or just ask me general questions. Well, uh, this gentleman named Benjamin contacted me on Instagram. He said he and his 10-year-old son Sawyer love the channel, and uh, he said they were recently at a comic book show, and his son wanted to send me something. Now I told them the same thing I tell everyone who, who brings stuff up like this to me. You don't have to send me anything, absolutely not guys. Just viewing the channel uh, is more than I could ever ask for. Uh, but as fate would have it, I got a call from my local comic book store and there was a box waiting for me up there at His and Her Comics in Greenfield. Uh, and I thought it might be like, you know, comic books or something, but no, it was this kind of hefty box here. Um, so I was surprised when I opened it up. Um, I'm gonna read the letter to you first. I was confused what was in here until I read the letters. Uh, and truth be told, I'm still a little confused. I'll explain it. All right, so here's this wonderful letter. Hi, Mike. Um, some information here about, you know, contact me for the first time. As I said there, my son Sawyer wanted to give you a present. We met this really nice guy named Matt at a local comic book show here in LA a couple of months ago, and he makes comic stands. Sawyer asked him to make your logo so he could send it to you. Hope you enjoy. Something to prop up some of your favorite Chris Claremont gems. Keep up the fun content and interesting thoughts on the comic scene. We really love getting your perspective and seeing your adventures. All the best, Benjamin and Sawyer. So that is awesome, guys. The letter is worth, you know, uh, uh, more than any comics they could send me. But here's the best thing that was in this box. Little Sawyer also wrote me a letter. I'm going to read it first. Dear Mike, hi, I am a fan of the channel. I wanted to gift you a gift for New Year's. I love Silver Age comics, exclamation mark. Me too, Sawyer. From Sawyer, P.S. I'm 10 in a picture of Spider-Man. How cool is that, guys? Uh, I love this stuff, guys. When I started my channel, you know, a year and a half ago, I never thought, like, you know, a kid on the other side of the country would be watching my channel and being inspired, you know, to collect comic books. How cool is that, guys? Uh, my, this is my favorite thing in this box, by the way, is this <laughs> picture. So I gotta find a good place for it, you know, somewhere on my wall or something like that. So how awesome is that? Thank you so much, Ben and Sawyer. Uh, thank you, Sawyer, for this great picture as well. Very cool. So let me show you guys what they actually got me. You heard them say in the letter, they were comic book stands. Well, at first I was confused. Everything was wrapped in bubble wrap and I started pulling out magnets. So these are 3D printed, like they're actually high quality, like resin, you know, uh, magnets, a uh, little magnet on the back, kind of a weak magnet, but still I'm like, okay, cool, they're magnets. Uh, there's a Marvel one, you see there's a DC one. Uh, there's a couple of uh, vaults of horror, right? Um, and I was very confused looking at these. I'm like, how do these hold a comic book, right? Uh, there's a 9.8, we got a 9.9, that's cool. And of course, of course, uh, X-Men, right? I love that one. Ooh, one more, we got an EC, an EC comics label, right? Uh, there's two more I wanna show you, but I'll show you uh, a little bit later. I was still confused, I'm like, how do these hold comic books? Well, there were two heavy things in the bottom, and they are these. So these are, you can see, comic book stands. The comic sits in there in the cradle. Uh, and these are called a Wham stand. You see the logo on the back. Uh, so very cool, right? I thought these were pretty awesome. They're really, again, high quality. They have some heft to them, absolutely. Uh, but then I realized, if you guys look in the front, you see a little like hexagon? Well, that's because the hexagon holds the logos, right? So just kind of 
magnet snaps in just like that. How cool is that, right? So if you have different comic books, you can present them differently, right? So if I want a DC comic, throw the DC label on there, uh, EC comic, right? Pretty nifty. Um, actually, let's try it out. So we'll put a, an X-Men logo on there, and let's grab a, let's grab first Gambit here. And yeah, it sits in there pretty pretty firmly. Like I said, these are pretty high quality. They have some weight to them. I mean, there's no doubt this, this is not gonna fall out or anything. You know, they're really well made. So how cool is that? Like, I thought it was really neat, but the coolest part, you guys uh, heard me read it in the letter, uh, Little Sawyer wanted this guy to make my logo. So I guess they sent him the information in a picture of my logo and how cool is that? Got me two LMCs made. Again, they're wicked high quality. I don't know how we did it. Um, and they have the magnets and sure enough, guys, look at You put it on the orange one especially. How sweet is that? That is super cool. I mean, I, I'd like to think I'm too humble to, you know, display these with my own logo on them. But truth be told, guys, I have my logo back here in a couple places and they're printed on scraps of paper, like out of my home printer. So maybe this is a, a step up. I'll put the logo on this. But how cool is that, guys? Absolutely, Benjamin and Sawyer, thank you so much for the letter, the, you know, the drawing, and, and especially these. These are fantastic. Um, absolutely awesome. One of the best gifts I ever got since starting this channel. Hey, I, I don't know who actually makes these guys, but I'm gonna try to find some information on where to get these. If you think these are pretty cool and you wanna buy them, I'll put some information, anything I could find, down in my description, guys. Definitely see if you can find these Wham stands. Maybe some of you were already familiar with them. Uh, I was not, so how cool is that, guys? One of the best gifts I ever got. So the next thing I want to show you guys is this package right here that just arrived in the mail. It is still sealed, uh, but I know exactly what this is. Uh, this is actually from my friend uh, Brandon from Mon Comics. So uh, Brandon is a friend I met through YouTube. Uh, he just had his one year anniversary of his channel in January. Really nice guy. Uh, you know, I've definitely become like real friends with him. We talk all the time. Uh, yeah, he's just a, a sweet man uh, with a fantastic comic book channel. If you guys have not checked him out, absolutely make sure you do so. Um, he's going to be my uh, second hashtag comic book shout out of the year. Definitely go check out Brandon, that awesome channel. Well, he was, uh, I was talking with him offline and he mentioned a book that he was selling on eBay. And I was like, whoa, 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 hey, hold on. I've been looking for that book for a long time. He's like, oh, really? I'll pull it off eBay and I'll, I'll sell it to you really cheap. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. Um, so yeah, he sent it to me. I got it really quickly within a few days and uh, I haven't looked at it yet, uh, but I know exactly what it is. Hold on, I'm having a hard time opening this wonderful packaging. <laughs> All right, he threw a couple of extra goodies in here too. All right, that was a lot of effort to open this up. So it says, thanks brother, much love, Brandon and attached to uh, the comic book still sealed in here, we have a couple of cards here. They look like Marvel masterpieces. So we've got a uh, Coming of Galactus with the Watcher right there, and it looks like we have, oh, of course, Brandon's favorite character, uh, a Man-Thing card right there. So that's awesome. Thanks, Brandon, for those. Um, now I gotta get into these. Hold on a second. All right, I finally got into the package. Gotta pull off this remaining tape here. Okay, let's look at it. Oh yeah, this is nice, high grade too. That's pretty cool. All right guys, uh, I've talked about this on my channel in the past, I, a million times, I love those Marvel trading cards. I really love the cosmic beings of the Marvel Universe and I love the fact when I looked at those cards when I was a kid, they had like stats that were off the board. Well, one of the most powerful characters in the entire Marvel Universe is the Living Tribunal. His first appearance was in Strange Tales number 157. It was a cameo, but his first full appearance was in this one right here. This is Strange Tales number 158 from 1967. We have this awesome Marie Severin cover depicting for the first time on the cover and in full in the comic, The Living Tribunal right there. Um, we have Doctor Strange there as well. So there's actually two stories in here. The first one is uh, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the other one is Doctor Strange. This was common uh, for these issues of Strange Tales at the time. Uh, so the first story of Nick Fury is actually uh, art and story by Jim Steranko, who I talked about recently. But the second story here uh, is story by Roy Thomas, art once again by Marie Severin and Herb Trimp. And uh, yes, it's the first full appearance of the Living Tribunal. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the Living Tribunal, he is the like ultimate judge of the Marvel multiverse. Um, he has uh, three sides to his head, you know, one is exposed, one is partly shrouded, one's completely shrouded, and there's a void in the back, so I guess four sides. Uh, yes, and he's the ultimate like arbiter of uh, justice in the multiverse. And I say multiverse because of all of the cosmic beings in the Marvel universe, 
every iteration, every multiverse, every single universe has all their own cosmic beings, right? So we have like a Galactus in every single different Marvel universe, right? We have a different eternity in every single one. The unique thing about the Living Tribunal is there's only one. He is the judge of all of the Marvel multiverses. And because of that, he is one of, if not the most powerful uh, in the Marvel universe, save, you know, the one above all, you know, basically God or Jack Kirby or Stan Lee, however you want to envision him. Uh, I think he's an awesome character, incredibly, insanely powerful. I love these cosmic beings. I like their first appearances. And here I finally have it. Uh, one cool little factoid I found out, guys, when I was uh, researching this book, I did not know it. There is a Pink Floyd album uh, called uh, Saucer Full of Secrets. And that album cover actually takes a lot of art from one of the pages in here. Uh, it's actually kind of mixed in. It's hard to see. But yeah, you'll see not only uh, the Living Tribunal on it, but also Doctor Strange kind of hidden in that cover. Little cool little fact, right? How fantastic is that? Uh, so there you go, guys. First, Living Tribunal. Thank you so much, Brandon, for sending this to me, as well as uh, these awesome cards. You guys know I love the cards. So these are pretty awesome. These are really nice, high quality, thick ones too. So pretty cool. One more book to add to my Cosmic Beings first appearances. Awesome. Okay, we finally got to the whole Whatnot story. Let me give you a little bit of background. I actually know the guys who were selling on Whatnot, and I especially knew they were selling this day because they were selling some of my books. Those of you who watch my channel may recall that recently I traded uh, two boxes of trade stuff uh, in a TMNT number one third print for the first appearance of Loki back there, I was pretty happy to make this trade and my friends were very happy to get some inventory to sell on whatnot. This is sort of a new venture for them. Uh, they go by the name of Magic Geeks. Uh, Larry and Josh, really good guys, friends of mine. We go out uh, for drinks and go collecting and stuff all the time. They're just really nice guys. And you know, they were set up selling on this morning, um, you know, a couple of towns away from me. So I was kind of half watching, you know, while I was working, just seeing, hey, there's my book. Hey, that's my book. Hey, what does it sell for? I was interested, right? Well, they were also selling books that were not mine, and uh, I just happened to notice a book that I was kind of interested in. I'd never actually bought anything on <laughs> Whatnot before, so I hit the bid button, and before I knew it, I won. Now, this is a book I was kind of interested in, not super interested in, but I got it for a great price, which is why I was okay with it. I kind of laughed because, you know, even though I live kind of close to them, they still have to ship it and everything like that. But either way, guys, I was pretty happy, and I think I got a great deal for it. Uh, what did I actually get? I got this here. This is Daredevil number nine from 1999. So this is Daredevil volume two, um, written by David Mack, uh, art by Joe Casada. This number nine issue is known as the first appearance of Maya Lopez, also known as Echo. Now Echo, I think, is in the uh, current Zeke Geist because they just had a Disney show about her. She appeared in the Disney Plus Hawkeye show and then had her own spinoff. She's a character, of course, affiliated with Daredevil. Now, she's a pretty cool character in that kind of like the obverse of Daredevil, she's actually deaf instead of blind, and she uses uh, visual memory. She has like a perfect visual memory and uh, mimicry um, to fight and things like that. She's also played many roles in Marvel Comics. She's been a member of the Avengers. Um, she's actually played the part of Ronan, who uh, if people saw Hawkeye know that, you know, it's also a persona of uh, Clint Barton. So she was Ronan, and then most recently, she was also a host of the Phoenix Force. All that is fascinating, but of course, most people now know her because of the television shows. Uh, and I think she's played by the fantastic Alakwa Cox. Uh, she is really, really great. It's very easy, guys, to, you know, see a character that is a Native American woman who is deaf, who's really good at fighting, and actually have that played by a Native American woman who's deaf, who's a really great athlete. She's absolutely fantastic in that show. I know a lot of people didn't love that show, but I thought she was absolutely amazing. So it's a pretty cool character, relatively modern as far as I'm concerned, although she's been around for 25 years, quarter of a century now. So I got this book, her first appearance and package with it was Daredevil number 10, her second appearance and also her first cover appearance. So if I was just talking a lot about Maya Lopez and Echo and you had no idea who I was talking about, that's what she looks like uh, with the famous the handprint on her face. So very cool, guys, to get both of these. Uh, what I get them for, uh, with shipping, I got them for under $40. I got them for like 38 bucks for both of them which I think is a great deal. You know, back in the day, you know, a couple years ago, this was selling for like a hundred bucks by itself. Of course, it's come down quite a bit, but I was happy to get these on an accidental bid for the price that I did. I thought these were pretty cool. Let me know down in the comments if you are a fan of Echo. Let me know what you think of the TV show if you saw it. Um, oh, there were two more books uh, they threw in there just as like a fun gag book, right? So they throw in extra books for everybody, uh, like dollar books, and they gave me these. These are uh, two Power Girl, Power Girl 14, 
and 15. Uh, I think these are from 2010. I know nothing about this uh, this storyline or this series. Let me know down in the comments if any of you are familiar with this 2010 Power Girl run. Uh, yeah, let me know what I have here. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. They were throw-ins for free. Which brings me to the last book, uh, the most interesting one. While I'm watching Josh and Larry sell on whatnot, I see a book in the background, right? They have the book that they're selling at, you know, at the time, but they had um, other like wall books they were selling. And I saw a book I've wanted for a long time. It's a rather big Bronze Age key that not only has significance for this particular character it's about, but also all of comic books. So I sent them a quick message saying, hey, I didn't know you had that. I'd be interested in that book. Again, went back to work doing whatever I had to. I checked back in later and that book was missing from the shelf. I'm like, ah, they must have sold it. However, I told you guys I did a trade with them for that Loki. Well, when we did that trade, we actually screwed some books up. They ended up with some books I didn't want to trade them. And I ended up with a bunch of books that I was supposed to give them. Just boxes got mixed up. You know, it's probably like, you know, 15 books or something. So at my lunch break, I said, I got to bring these books to them before their whatnot show ends. So I went over there. Um, I'll actually show you guys a little bit of footage of the moment I arrived. Let, oh, Mike no. just pulled up. Oh, there he is. Hey. hey. Oh, what's up? Awesome. You don't knock anywhere. Huh? <laughs> I can go back to work. Hi, everyone on the stream. You guys are doing great. <laughs> Keep buying books, guys. Right, yeah. Pull these guys out. Thanks a lot, guys. Mike. Right. How's it going? Is Mike there to buy back the Ninja Turtles? Ben Taz is asking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll talk in a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll Bye, guys. See Take care, Mike. So it was fun to sort of like gate crash their whatnot sale. Uh, it was just fun to jump in there, you know, and say hi to people that were watching. Uh, but when I arrived again, I'm like, you know, I hand them the books and I was like, where's that book? And they had pulled it down for me. So Larry hands me this book. I look at it. I'm excited. And I left. So I have not squared up with them on this book. They were willing to sell it to me, trade it to me, whatever favors do. I'm not sure yet. Let me show you guys the book. We'll talk about it. And you guys tell me what you think I should give them in return for this awesome book. What book did I need so badly? I had to rush over there and grab it. It's this. This is The Amazing Spider-Man number 121 from 1973, John Romita cover, written by Jerry Conway, pencils on the inside by Gil Kane. And this is one of the most important books that have ever come out of the comic publishing history. This is, of course, The Death of Gwen Stacy. Uh, this was notable for a lot of reasons, guys. Remember, comic books in the 60s were pretty tame for the most part. Bad things didn't really happen. But then we get into the 70s and things get a little bit grittier. And that's kind of how we identify, like, the Bronze Age of comics. You know, there was a lot more things, you know, talking about war, a little bit more horror came back. They talked about things like drugs and addiction. Um, and finally, death. No one thought a major character could die back then. But here we have Peter Parker's longtime girlfriend, Gwen Stacy is killed in a fight with the Green Goblin. Very notably, uh, Green Goblin knocks her off of the George Washington Bridge. Spider-Man catches her with a web, and her neck snaps. And this was shocking at the time it happened. Uh, and it was so groundbreaking at the time. You know, it was actually a death that stuck. Pretty much still stuck to this day, although we have alternate versions of Gwen Stacy, of course. She actually stayed dead for a long time. It not only changed Spider-Man, Pretty much more than any other time, other than his, you know, his first appearance in Amazing Fantasy 15, it changed the character considerably, opened the doors for Mary Jane Watts and things like that in the future, but also it changed comic books, guys. I mean, a lot of people cite this book as the start of the Bronze Age of comics. Uh, people were shocked by it. It's still shocking. I tell you guys, when I brought this book home, though, I immediately opened it up and read the entire thing. And I tell you, even knowing what's going to happen, it was like watching a car crash, right? You knew what was going to happen and it was still horrifying you know people forget too there's a couple of things going on in this um harry osborn uh, is actually hopped up on drugs again beginning of the bronze age comics and peter parker is sick he has like the flu in this which kind of lends to the whole reason why he's not as sharp and on his game i can't say enough about this book guys awesome yellow cover one of my favorite yellow cover books ever it's a great book it's an important book and i was happy to get this for whatever i end up getting it for now let's talk about the condition real quick um, they had it listed as a 3.0. You can see it does have some issues. It presents great. I mean, it, the colors are bright. Um, it does have a little bit of pen uh, in a couple of places, right? It does have a piece of the corner missing right there. It's a little bit of skew to the pages. Not quite a roll, but it's a little odd. There's little tears here and there. There's a tear right there near the spine. So I think a 3.0 is probably right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the kid who read this back in the 70s might have had chocolate on his hands because the first like three or four pages and a couple of the last ones do have chocolate or some substance on the edges. So um, 
Kind of a bummer, but that's okay, guys. It's still a really, really cool book, and I'm happy with it in its condition. Now, the prices when I looked online for what these go for, this come down quite a bit. You can get one in this condition for about $100 or so. So again, I haven't worked out with Josh and Larry what I pay for this or if I trade for or what we're going to do. We will figure it out in the future, but let me know what you would pay for this book uh, if you were in the market for it. I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Um, awesome book, guys. If you ever have a chance to read this comic book just to you really try to partake in that feeling of what it was like to read it for the first time in 1973. I still think it's kind of shocking, even nowadays when we have lots of controversy and lots of things like this happen in comic books. Deaths are not permanent in comic books, guys, and the fact that this one was, the fact that this is one of the biggest keys that figures the death of a character, which normally we don't care much about, I think this makes it fantastic. It's pivotal to Spider-Man and also the history of comic books as a whole. Awesome. Let me know what you think down in the comments of everything I picked up, guys. Let me know what you think of this book. Let me know what you think of the character of Echo. <laughs> let me know if you uh, know anything about these Power Girls. Uh, let me know if you like uh, the Living Tribunal. Uh, and of course, if you are interested in those comic book holders, I'd love to hear from you as well. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places, as well as stealing them from your friends on whatnot. Don't do that. I'm kidding. Don't do that. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.